Lost. Tales. The story of White Huns or Hephthalites. Hephthalite Chronology. In the previous videos, we looked at the journey of Hephthalites, moving out of Chinese territories and coming to Transoxiana and gradually reaching their golden period of Imperial Hephthalites. From this period onwards we observe presence of Hephthalites both in Central Asia and India. So let us continue their journey as Hunners of India and Hephthalites of Central Asia. Hunners of India 455 to 484 AD Narasimhapta, of the Guptas drives the Hephthalites from the plains of northern India, but the Kidarites sense an opportunity in the increasing fragility of the empire and begin menacing its borders. There is clearly still some life left in the Kidarites despite their authority being severely reduced, but the lack of any specific mention after this point suggests that they become indistinguishable from the population of Hephthalites or Alkans. Around 470 AD White Hun raids into India are said to have reached a high point, when the Gupta king Skandakta died. The Taganor governor King Ila also known as Tunjina is said to have led these raids into India. After this they descended from the Kabul valley into Punjab, sacking towns, and cities until they reached the seat of Gupta power in Patilibutra. 484-515 AD Son of Tunjina, Toramana breaks through the Gupta defenses in the northwest, and much of the Gupta Empire is overrun by the Hephthalites by AD 500. The empire disintegrates under Toramana's attacks, and those of his successor, Mihirakula. The Hephthalites conquer several provinces of the former empire, including Malwa, while Gujarat and Taneshwar break away under local dynasties. The surviving Guptas are forced south and east, to Jabalpur and northern Bengal, where they establish minor Gupta holdings. Toramana ruled from 484 to 515 AD. 515 to 533 AD. Mihirakula ruled from 515 to 533 in the greater part of India. After his defeat in 533 AD by Yasodharman in the west, Mihirakula tried to consolidate his power in the east of his empire around Patna, but was defeated by the king Baladitya there, who being a Buddhist did not kill Mihirakula. He then withdrew to Kashmir. He eventually ascended the Kashmiri throne through guile and deceit but did not manage to keep power for too long, dying in 533 AD of disease. 537 to 670 AD. After Mahirakula's death, his youngest half-brother, Pravarasena ruled from 537 to 597 AD, followed by his son, Gokana, Gokana's son, King Kilu and his son, Yudhishthira, and finally, son of Yudhishthira, Lakana, ruled the northern part of India until 670 AD. After 670 AD the Huna Empire in India collapsed. It should be mentioned that Hun mandalas or centers existed for a long time even after the main empire collapsed. Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and East Gujarat are known Huna centers in India. They gradually assimilated into the native population and integrated with the people. Much other evidence is given as to the extent in which Huns spread in India and moreover they are said to be the ancestors of many local tribes of the region such as the Rajputs, Gujars, and Jats. Hephthalites of Central Asia 481 AD A second Sassanid Hephthalite war is launched by Peroz, with Vaktang Gorgasali, king of Chosroid Iberia in support. Initially successful by chasing the Hephthalites out of Bactra, the war ends in the capture of Peroz again, with him agreeing to the payment of 30 mule packs of silver drams as a ransom, parts of which he pays through imposing a poll tax. To meet the rest of the demanded sum he leaves his son Kavad as a hostage with the Hephthalites, along with a daughter and a Sasanid chief priest. 484 AD In 484, after the liberation of his son, Peroz prepared in Gurgan for a third war against the Hephthalites. The king marched his large army all the way to Balkh where he established his base camp. When Aksan War learned of Peroz's campaign, he sent his deputy with the following message. You concluded peace with me in writing, under seal, and you promised not to make war against me. We defined common frontiers not to be crossed with hostile intent by either party. But Peroz continued his campaign. 
Along the way he destroys the tower built by Baram V which marks the border between Sassanid and Hephthalite, feigning not to have violated his grandfather's peace treaty. On the other side of the border, Aksan War sets a trap, a deep ditch into which Perose falls, along with around 30 of his sons and about 100,000 troops. Their bodies are never recovered by the Sassanids. The main Sasanian cities of the eastern region of Nishapur, Herat and Maru were now under Hephthalite rule. 530s to 540s AD. The significant setbacks experienced by the Sassanids directly caused by the Hephthalites in the latter part of the 5th century, are a prime motivator for reforms that are undertaken by Shahs Kavad and Khosrow I. Four major defensive, and presumably administrative, zones in the Sassanid administration are created. 565 AD onwards. The powerful Hephthalites are defeated by an alliance of Gokturks and Sassanids at a great battle near Bakara. The remnants of the northern Hephthalite forces withdraw to a small principality between Akram and Qum, close to the southern entrance to the Iron Gate, called Shaganian or Saganian, where its ruler, Faganish, is selected as the new Hephthalite king. He is quickly forced to submit to the Sassanids under Khusro I. The Western Gokturks set up rival states in Bamiyan, Kabul, and Kapiso under the authority of the Viceroy in Tokaristan, strengthening their hold on the Silk Road. Hephthalite subjects of the Gokturks are known to be involved in the First Perso-Turkic War. Remaining independent Hephthalite activity is now confined to the southern side of the Hindu Kush, combined with other Zionite groups as post-Hephthalite Alkins. Not much known is about the remnants of the northern Hephthalites, although their survival in the region seems to be indisputable. The remaining Hephthalites principalities form autonomous small authorities that survive under Sassanid and Gokturk governance, and the Hephthalite people gradually blend into the eastern Iranian population. They were nomadic Hunnic tribes of Central Asia. They were migrant warriors who ruled over an expansive area stretching from the Central Asian lands all the way to the Western Indian subcontinent. They had the obvious ability to fully integrate with the conquered regions. Their influence was fast and brutal. Despite the limited time they ruled and lack of records about them, they managed to leave a legacy. This was the story of Hephthalites. Lost. Tales.